September 8, 11.43 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Hey there everyone, this is Danielle. Back for some more of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, Justice for All. <laughs> uh, amnesia? I can't believe my lawyer is trying to defend me in such a state. I, uh... Why didn't you tell me, sir? Uh, I'm sorry I didn't mention it to you. Oh, I know what to do. I heard you can fix something like this with a really strong shock to your system. Come on, lower your head a little. A maggy kick should be all you need. Uh, no, no, no. I think I'll pass on this one. Come on. Uh, I'm sorry. Whenever I see someone in trouble, I have a hard time leaving them alone. I tend to stick my nose where it doesn't belong and try to tackle everyone's problems. Sweetie, you should stop being a cop. You... It's, it's not working well. <laughs> well, my head's one problem you won't be tackling today. Well, we're here to solve your problem first. Your problem first, sorry. You can deal with mine later. For now, do you think you could fill me in on a few things? Of course, I'd be honoured to. Uh, well, I guess we'll start with my name, then I can tell you about me. No, no, that's okay, really. I think I know you and your name pretty well by now. I was wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So, my name is Phoenix, right? What a weird name. Hmm, this is serious. I really don't remember. Uh, I'll tell you what, sir. You can have this back and maybe it'll help. This is a business card? I got this from you. It's my most prized possession. Oh, that's so cute. Maggie, you're, you're a baby. You can borrow it for now, but please give it back, okay? Okay. There are some numbers written on the back. Oh, that's your cell phone number. Phoenix's business card added to the court record. It's my business card. I hand wrote my cell phone number on the back. Yep. I guess for now we should stop talking about me and start talking about this case. This case? Yep. Can you think of anything that would be helpful for me, helpful for me to know? Um, what can I tell you? Um, hmm. I can't think of anything other than the incident with that cell phone, but... Cell phone? Yeah, your eyes lit up when we talked about it at the detention centre, sir. Hurry up then and tell me, this might be very important. Okay, Roger. It was on the day of the crime, just before 6pm. I picked up a lost cell phone while on a walk with Dustin. All of a sudden, the phone began to ring. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. We agreed to meet up at 6pm. Dustin and I waited for the person to show up, but they never did. Hmm. So where is the phone you found now? I gave it to you yesterday. Huh? To me? Is that the? Is it that phone in my pocket? Y you mean this? Do you think it has anything to do with the murder? I don't really know, but if my eyes lit up... Ah, you were here all along! You're so mean! I called you a million times, but you wouldn't pick up! And when I went to check in the courtroom, everyone had already left! Ack, now who in the heck is this? Let me guess, I'm supposed to know this girl too. Hey, good morning, Maggie! And a good morning to you too, Maya! So, so, how's it going? Is there a word for worse than abysmal? Oh, and what if I said that everything will be fine? That's right, it's my to the rescue with the ultra decisive, super important evidence! Here you are, Nick, the thing you wanted me to bring! Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. What the heck is this? A list? It has about 20 people's names and phone numbers written on it. It was kinda tough, but I managed to dig up some dirt. 
It looks like these guys are up to no good. No good? As in? There's a group of con artists the police are currently investigating. I think these guys are members of that group. Names listed to the court record. Why would a group of con artists pop up in a case like this? Don't look at me! Hmm. And where did you get this list from in the first place? What? Don't you remember, Nick? You're the one who asked me to look this up yesterday. Oh, is that right? These numbers are in the memory of that phone Maggie found. Hmm, so that's where they're from. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. I hope I never get to be a forgetful old prune like you. Uh, Maya, actually, Mr. Wright is... Mr. Wright, recess is now over. Please bring the defendant and return to the courtroom immediately. Oh, oops. Guess you have to get going. We can talk about you being old later, Nick. W wish us luck. I guess I have all the pieces now, more or less. All that's left is to put, them, put it all together. I'm not going to lose this. I can't. Come on, Nick. Better get a move on. Y yeah. September 8, 11.54 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number two. Court will now reconvene. Please call your next witness to the stand, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. But before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? It's about the next witness. He has a tendency to say things that rub people the wrong way, you see. So I asked that the court might be a little lenient on... It sounds terrible. <laughs> There's no need to give a preface, just hurry up and call your witness, please. Y yes Your Honor. The prosecution, prosecution calls the next witness. A drifter who was taking a walk in the park on the day of the murder. Oh, look who it is. Please state your name for the court, witness. Before I do, I'd like to clarify a little something. Huh? Oh, alright, go ahead. Just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps as a drifter who was taking a walk? D did I? But I will not stand for that. Now you've tinted the court's eyes and coloured me wrongly. Sure, I suppose coming to the would be absolute truth, but to give him to set will be able to zephyr. I can't have that. I was high top called Kalyuk. <laughs> Unbeatable university, don't you see? I would make reception person and make sure they're going as... Oh my god. I hate when they do this. I can't... I'm not fast enough. <laughs> yes, yes, I understand. I'm very sorry. I'll be more careful from now on. What is he? A human chatterbox? Ugh, I have to question him. Fashion, cars, women, glasses, and of course, at university, first rates only need apply. Glasses? But you aren't wearing glasses. That's enough. Your name, witness. Oh, is that how you want to play this? Using your power and influence to keep the young people down, I see how you work now. You old people and your dirty tricks, you thought you had me, but you thought wrong. Oh, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Oh man. I forgive you. Alright, I suppose I can tell you my name. I am Richard Wellington, the drifting virtuoso with a PhD in drifting, as it were. If you wanted to, you could call me a university student in transit. <laughs> Mr. Wellington. On the day of the murder, you were taking a, a strolling through the park, correct? It would appear that you are attached to that word. If you must, then by all means. But I remind you that I am in no way a prepubescent boy out on a walk with mummy. If you must know, I am... Anyway, please testify to this court what you saw during your walk through the park. See, you said it again. Taking a walk. You know, you... What you witnessed will do, Mr. Wellington. What I saw that day. I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6pm. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above, right in front of my eyes. Without a thought, I looked up, and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Of course I remember her sweet face, it was that of a pretty defendant there. The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. 
Hmm, that was certainly a decisive testimony. Decisive? Nick, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you have to say? How can you be so calm? It's strange. My mind is very calm and clear. Maybe it's because I believe in my client. You mean Maggie? Yes, and if she really is innocent, then that can only mean one thing. That guy is lying. You may not question the witness, Mr. Wright. I'll find out the truth, no matter how well you craft your lies. Okay, so... It's kind of obvious here. The, the thing is... Mr. Wellington mentioned a banana that fell with a police officer, and it's like, what the hell are you talking about, right? It turns out there is something that looks a bit like a banana at the crime scene. Like this, perhaps. Objection! Mr. Wellington, I believe I have the bananas you saw right here. Ah, so you knew about the bananas too. Why didn't you say so earlier? I don't think you can use this as a way to pull more information out of me. And that's where you'd be wrong. Mm, Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Isn't that the baseball glove? Huh? W -w what? A baseball glove? Doesn't it look delicious, care for a bite? Th th that's... That's not... It's a... No! Your Honor, I think this proves one very important fact. This witness... <laughs> loves bananas. <laughs> By the way, just how bad are your eyes? Huh? How? What? You... Why are you asking me about this all of a sudden? Your Honor, it is very simple to mistake a glove for a bunch of bananas. No, I don't think so. Objection overruled. Y y you... You're one of those people. Yes, you know what I mean. You're like those people who accused Galileo of his Copernican theory. Is there other new possibilities? Sure, in the end, we found it was in fact a glove, not bananas. However, even from afar, I think there's enough room for doubt, don't you? And that is why I asked you how bad your eyesight is. They're both 2200. I suppose you're gonna tell me that's terrible, right? Why are you not wearing your glasses today, then? Um, that's because I lost them recently, you see. Of course, I was planning on getting a new pair right, right away. But, you know, my glasses are no ordinary glasses, so to replace them... How about when you witnessed a crime? Were you wearing your glasses then? How about a witness? You and an unrelenting evil man. You're like those people who directed Joan of Arc, put it at and courageous, and got horrible unrighteous people. When she didn't do anything wrong, she's all gruesomely burned at the... Which boils down to you were not wearing your glasses at the time. Therefore, the identity of the woman at the scene of the crime and that of the defendant cannot be proven to be the same by this witness. But the height difference was only nine feet. It was very possible for him to see the face of the culprit standing on the upper path. Hmm. Witness. Please be more accurate in your testimony. Remember, a person's life is at stake. Yes, Your Honor. Now then, please continue with your testimony. Just tell the court what happened next, in the moments after you witnessed the crime. What happened next? The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as she realised I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45pm when I made the call. They must have had a lot of free time on their hands since they showed up within 10 minutes. Hmm. So the person who was on the upper path saw you and then ran away. Yes, that is correct. Which is why even someone without a superior brain like mine can understand that that girl is the murderer. You may question the witness now, Mr. Wright. Okay, so the important part here is the time at which Mr. Wellington made the call. 6.45 p.m. Because if we have a look at the autopsy report, we notice that Dustin died at 6.28, which means there's about a 15-minute gap. Objection! 
Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report? According to this, the murder occurred at 6.28pm. So what of it? You said that you called the police immediately after the murder took place. However, by the time you had called the police, it was already 6.45pm. There is clearly a 15 minute gap here. Do you deny it? Ah! I think this court would like to hear what you were doing during those 15 minute gap. The witness was in shock at the time after witnessing a terrible murder. It's not only to be expected that he would be a little dazed. 15 minutes is hardly what I would call a little dazed. Ah! Mr. Wellington. E yes Explain yourself. What were you doing during those 15 minutes? Answer the question. I, uh, t telephone. But I mean... Spit it out. I, I was searching for a phone booth. A phone booth? You mean, you didn't have a cell phone? You and your questions. As if you're trying to open all the layers of a matri... M Matryoshka doll. Matryoshka? Ma Matryoshka? You must think you're really something special. Witness. I lost my cell phone. There, are you happy? You lost it? Unbelievable. You lose your glasses and your cell phone. You must be very scatterbrained when it comes to your belongings. What? Are you saying that first reef will never allowed to lose things? Haven't you ever heard that all genius have a strange quirk or two? Since I have my own quirk, that means I'm a genius. <laughs> Enough. Oh man, oh man. Wait, hold on a second. He lost his cell phone? Nick, that cell phone, could it be? You mean this phone Maggie found? There's no way. Boy, I didn't see this coming. What should I do now? Mr. Wellington, where is your cell phone right now? <laughs> what are you getting all excited about? You seem to be a little confused. I found my phone, I'll have you know. See, here, here is it. Here is it. Here, here it is. Here, here is it. <laughs> That's weird. Oh, I see. Hmm, looks like he's got his phone. And I thought that just maybe this was his. Hmm. Well then, I think we've cleared this issue up. At the time of the murder, the witness did not have his cell phone because he had lost it. Therefore, the delay in his call was caused by his search for a phone booth. Well, that's the gist of it. I guess you could put it that way and leave it at that. Do you have any further questions, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, the witness's testimony does not make any sense. I don't believe that there was ever a need for the witness to search for a phone. Uh, how dare you! You can't just make outrageous claims like that. You do have some sort of proof, don't you? Well, y yeah, of course. This evidence should be good enough, I think. Alright, let's have this proof then. Please present proof that the witness had no need to search for public phone booths. Pretty simple, really. If you look at this photograph here, there's a phone booth directly behind the crime scene, right there. Easily accessible. It's quite simple, actually. Please take a look at this. At the crime scene photo? Is there a problem with it? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the picture. But if you don't understand my logic after looking at it, something is wrong with you. Rude. <laughs> No! It's... it's... a phone booth. That is correct. All the defendant had to do was walk... Defendant? The witness. No, not the defendant. Witness. <laughs> Mr. Wellington, why did you not use the phone that was right in front of you? Order! Order! What does reporting the crime a little late prove for the defense? The witness can't explain what he was doing for those 15 minutes. 
That is reason enough to throw suspicion on his testimony. Yes, this is very true. What do you have to say for yourself, witness? And I bet this phone really is his, Nick. He must have killed Dustin to get his phone back. But Maggie said she was going to return it to him. So there was no reason for him to kill for it. And on top of that, we still have the phone she found anyway. Hmm, maybe he wasn't looking for his cell phone. Maybe he was looking for something else? Was he? Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? Do you have any thoughts you would like to share with the court? Can you offer an explanation as to what the witness was doing during those 15 minutes? There is only one possible explanation. Alright, let's hear your explanation. However, be forewarned if your explanation is not persuasive. You will be penalised. Think carefully before you present, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honour. Ugh. I probably shouldn't have said there was only one possibility. Please present to the court the one piece of evidence that will answer the following. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? Okay, so what happened? As we know, the, uh, the victim grabbed his assailant's glasses and they ended up underneath his body. So, for those 15 minutes, Mr. Wellington was looking for his glasses. Mr. Wellington. W what? Don't do that, you almost gave me a heart attack. These are your glasses, aren't they? Ah, where? Where did you find? Gah! I believe the court all heard what you just confessed to. But these glasses are in fact yours. I'll tell you where they were found, Mr. Wellington. These glasses were found under the victim's body. Uh, under the victim's body? Order, order. Now, wait a second, hold on. Uh, I didn't confess or confirm anything. Your Honor, I think the answer is quite clear here. As he fell, Dustin Prince grabbed the culprit's glasses. The culprit knew that he had to find his glasses and search frantically for them. What he didn't realise is they were under the victim's body. And that is why it took him 15 minutes to make that call. Mr. Wright, are you... Are you indicting the witness as the real murderer? Obviously, that's what I always do. <laughs> Of course, that is precisely what I am doing. Ooh. Wow. I know I'm right. He is the real murderer. Did you figure it out, Nick? More or less. Turns out this cell phone was the key to this case after all. Anyway, now is our chance to deep six this guy. I'll sink him in one shot. Yeah! so exciting watching you work again. Somehow my old slob is coming back to me. It's time to sink or swim. Everything rests on the edge of a knife. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Order, order. Your Honor, the defense. The defense is making a mockery of this court. Without any solid ground to stand on, he accuses the witness of being the murderer. Y yeah, that's, that's right. I... Uh, I'm, I'm no criminal. This third-rate fraud of a lawyer. In that case, why don't we look at it from a different perspective? Let's hear your explanation as to why you were not the murderer. Oh, come on. That's not how it works, Phoenix. You know that. Why, that's... that's easy. Um, uh... For example, there's, um, the, the name the victim wrote. What about that? Oh, you mean the name Maggie? Yeah, even an idiot like you can read that, right? But we already know this was not written by the victim himself. After all, the defendant's name is Maggie and the victim was left-handed. In other words, in order to make the defendant look guilty, the real criminal used the victim's right hand to write her name on the ground. But, but, but... Wouldn't that mean that the real criminal was someone the defendant knew? Otherwise, how else would the person know her name was Maggie? Uh, Maggie. That is a good point. The witness didn't even know of Ms. Burr before this trial. Ah, oh, I forgot. 
Hmm, was there any way this creep could have known Maggie's name beforehand? Yep. It would be best if I could prove that the witness had a chance to learn that the defendant's name was Maggie. Now, will the defense please present its case? How could the witness have known the defendant's name? Mr. Wellington, you didn't have your cell phone with you on the day of the murder, correct? So what if I didn't? When you realised you had lost it, what did you do? What did I do? Didn't you try to find it by calling it? Why you... how did you... Your Honor, these questions have nothing to do with... Overruled. Mr. Wright, where are you going with this line of questioning? Do you think there is some relation between the witness's cell phone and the murder? I do, Your Honor. On the day of the murder, Murky Bird picked up a lost phone in the park. And... She also received a phone call from the owner of the phone. Beep. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. Be right there. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. She's so cute, I love her. Little baby. Little baby. That was when you learned that her name was Maggie. Uh, um, um. But you made one fatal mistake. Fatal mistake? My client's name is Maggie, but the name that was written on the ground was Maggie. I don't... This is a mistake that would only occur if all you knew was how her name sounded. Well, you're, you're not you're not saying you're not spelling it out when you say it. So, uh, oh my god, <laughs> Eek. order, order. But uh, your honor, the witness has no motive. And your point is, it's very simple, your honor. A person usually would not kill someone without a reason. Mr. Wellington had no reason to kill anyone. That's absolutely correct. I don't have a motive. Hmm. Mr. Wright? Your Honor? Can you explain what motive this witness could have had? It's very simple, Your Honor. Are you sure, Nick? If I said I can't offer an explanation, then the trial's over, right? Yeah, but... Now then, please present to this court proof that the witness had a motive. It's the phone. Again. Mr. Wellington's motive is right here. The cell phone? In the memory of the phone the defendant found was a list of certain phone numbers. You... you looked up all those numbers? Of course. This list of phone numbers was stored in the cell phone's memory. The names and numbers belonged to people who were members of a certain con artist's group. W w w what? Con artists? Can you explain why these numbers were on your phone, Mr. Wellington? They, this, this is an outrage, an invasion of privacy. Looking up the phone numbers on a person's phone is a worse crime than murder. You're one of those people. So the cops who raided that billion dollars. I don't care, Mr. Wellington. All I want is for you to tell us what this list is about. You think you, any of you, know what it's like to be a refined man such as me? Your Honor, this this is this is unjustified badgering of the witness. Objection overruled. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Why would the witness have the numbers of a group of con artists on his phone? Isn't that obvious? The witness is. Mr. Wellington is a member of this very group. No! All of your friends' phone numbers are stored right here on this phone. If anyone were to look into these phone numbers, it would be all over for you. That is why you had to kill. No! This is too much! Hmm, that does make quite a bit of sense. Well, Mr. Wellington, would you care to explain? I, um, I... I got you now. I, I, that, I, that police officer. Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Payne? 
Your Honour, th this is this is unjustified badgering of the witness. Said that exact same thing only a few seconds ago. P -p 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 please, please, let's think about the content of that phone call. Um, hello. Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. The defendant had already promised that she would return the phone. After that, all Mr. Wellington had to do was meet Ms. Bird to get his phone back. Why, then, would you need to kill anyone? Hmm. That is a valid point. What does the defense think about this? Hmm. If you think about it logically, then it makes sense. Then maybe we should be thinking outside the box. Yeah, if you think like that, let's see. Maybe that slime ball saw something at the crime scene that made him commit murder. Your thoughts, Mr. Wright? Hmm, well, I don't think Mr. Wellington went to pick up his phone in a very friendly manner. But he was promised his phone, so why would he have been unfriendly to the defendant? I think he must have seen something that didn't agree with him when he got there. Well then, Mr. Wright, what was this something that didn't agree with the witness? Well, we saw from the little flashback earlier that Maggie was wearing, you know, street clothes. She was wearing a blue badger hoodie, which it's still a police thing, but it's not a, like an actual uniform. But Dustin was still in his uniform. So, in other words, the witness saw a cop. And he, and like all of us, he knows that a cab. <laughs> What Mr. Wellington saw was the victim. The victim? You mean Dustin Prince? Dustin Prince had gone on his date right after his shift was over. With no time to change, he went to the park still wearing his police uniform. Oh! Carl picked up my phone with a policeman. He couldn't have known they were going out, so he began to worry. He was afraid the policeman would ask a few questions before returning the phone. If I do anything suspicious, he might want to check on my phone. In his mind, it was possible I ought to already run a check on his phone. He went into a panic, is what you're saying. Exactly. Officer Prince was murdered simply because he was in uniform. Okay, but, but a cab though. Mr. Payne, do you have any comments? I am... Um, I'm thinking... Hmm... It seems the truth has come out at last. The witness, Mr. Wellington, you are... Huh. <laughs> Impressive. Not bad for a person with a third-rate education. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> the evidence! Evidence! Uh, that guy's creeping me out. All you've been waving out and talking about is that suspicious cell phone. Suspicious phone number this, suspicious con group that, they were all on that phone! But who's to say that phone is really mine? Where's your proof? Your evidence? You want proof that this phone is yours? <laughs> I already told you earlier. That phone I lost, I've already found it. You don't have even the slightest idea who the phone in your hand belongs to. But you can be sure it isn't mine, you simpleton. What? <laughs> it feels good to see you squirm. Hmm. We didn't have a problem on our hands with this phone. Whose phone is it? Without knowing that, it's meaningless as evidence. Your Honor. This is bad. I can't let him turn the tables on me like this. Hmm. This cell phone. There has to be something I've overlooked. There's got to be. Hmm, maybe... I got it. We should check the... the I got it. We should check for fingerprints. Fingerprints? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wellington must have left some prints on this phone. Nick, don't you remember? When you got that from Maggie, you wiped it off. I what? You said there was sand all over it, so... Wiped it? I wiped it? Pretty thoroughly, too. What? what why? <laughs> it's 
Oh, so much fun watching third-rate trash babble like morons amongst themselves. Ugh, he's made a complete recovery. How many times do I have to say this? My phone is right here, you see? Oh, and incidentally, you can't check the numbers stored on this phone. It must have glitched because all the numbers just magically disappeared. You've got to be joking. He erased all the numbers I was going to use as evidence. Mr. Wellington. What's this? By the tone of your voice, it sounds like you still have some fight left in you. Where did you finally find your cell phone? <laughs> oh, you were too much! And of course you have no idea what I'm talking about. I... I... Oh my... Now I remember! Huh. Looks like they hung up. Ah, good. I finally found it. So that's when... What's wrong, Mr. Attorney? Why the harsh glare in your eyes? Nick, we've worked so hard to get this far, but if you don't do something quick, he's gonna get off scot-free. I know. I know this phone has to be his, but how am I supposed to prove something like that? Mr. Wright, if you cannot prove who the owner of that cell phone is, your indictment has no basis and therefore no power. It looks like you came up a penny short. Where? Why did I go wrong? You wiped off the cell phone. Why would you do that? Don't blame yourself, you're merely a third-rate lawyer. You only made one big mistake. Who are you? What are you? That's something you haven't figured out for yourself yet. Who? I am? The court hereby concludes the cross-examination. <laughs> if that will be all, I'll have to bid you gentlemen and ladies goodbye. I have a reservation at that ultra-fancy restaurant on the upper side of town. Thank you for your assistance. You've had a stressful day, so please, bon appetit. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just let it go with that? Please wait, Your Honor. Alright, Nick. I think I may be able to prove it. Prove it? Prove what, Mr. Wright? Everything. Y Your Honor, the cross-examination has already ended. Besides, the defense is just going to badger the witness with more inane questions. You will not harass the witness, is that clear, Mr. Wright? Did you hear that? No harassment allowed, Mr. Attorney. Please, Your Honor. Very well. But this is your last chance, Mr. Wright. You may present one piece of evidence to the court. I only get one shot at this. But you cannot prove everything. It's over. For your client and for you. Do you fully understand? Yes, sure. I'm sure you're well aware, Your Honor, that the cross-examination period has ended. Were you paying attention, Mr. Payne? I said that Mr. Wright could present only one more piece of evidence. Oh. Now then, Mr. Wright, this is your last chance. It all comes down to this. It's go time. Please present the one piece of evidence that will explain everything. Oddly enough, it's my business card. <laughs> Why, thank you. How nice. Here, please have one of mine. The judge's business card added to the court record. Wait, what am I doing? This isn't the time to be exchanging business cards. Your Honor, there is something very important about that card, and that is... This card is important because of what is on the back. Hmm? You wrote your cell phone number on the back, but... But that's exactly it. Can you please call this number from your cell phone? Huh? Right now? But court is still in session. It's okay. You'll see. 
Okay, if you say so. Is the defense preparing something, Mr. Wright? We're going to call my cell phone now. And then the court will see everything for what it is. All the idiotic, stupid things to... Ah. What? Why is my phone... And what is with this stupid sounding ringtone? Mr. Wellington. Hmm, how strange. I could almost swear that you're holding my phone. You're... Ah! No, 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 it can't! By the way, before I forget, thank you very much for the lump on my head this morning. Mm. I don't think I need to explain any further except to say... When you went to retrieve your cell phone, you mistakenly took the wrong one. So that is what happened. We knocked out by Mr. Wellington. He's a man who lives on his pride and self-image alone. And in order to hide his involvement with the con artists group, he has become paranoid and has lost all ability to make rational judgments. Hmm. Then, then Mr. Wright, the phone you're holding. It's Mr. Wellington's, naturally. Speaking of that man, how is he, Mr. Payne? Uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Now then, this court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. Not. Guilty. Yay! That is all. This court is adjourned. September 8th. 8th. 2.16pm. <laughs> District Court. Defendant Lobby Number 1. I knew that the real you would shine through eventually. I am so moved by what you've done for me, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Wright. I feel really bad for Dustin. He didn't do anything that deserves this. It's probably because of me. Huh? My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. A whole life? It can't be that bad, can it? Since I was six months old, when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building, I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods, failed at almost every test I've ever taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster, and never won or even tied at a game of tic-tac-toe. My life has really been nothing but a string of disasters. That is, uh, pretty bad. Up until I went to college, I was known as the Goddess of Misfortune. And then at the Academy, everyone called me Lady Luckless. Lady Luckless? What's worse is that my misfortune always seems to latch onto those around me. What do you mean? When I see someone in trouble, I always try to help. Oh, that's right. You were talking about this earlier. It happened again recently, too, sir. There was an old lady pacing back and forth by the pedestrian crosswalk. I gave her my hand, and before I knew it, we were having dinner at my house. Oh. I'm sure that Dustin's gone because of me. That's not true. That glove didn't even have any sort of special meaning. It was just a present to say thanks for covering one of my night shifts. Oh, I see. Everything is all my fault. Dustin's death. Your head being all messed up. Oh, uh, well, I don't think my head is that messed up yet. I'm gonna find a new life for myself, starting now. Next time we meet, I'm sure I'll... I'm sure I'll have found a whole ocean's worth of good luck by then, sir. Yeah, after all, the goddess of misfortune is only a name. You bet, I'm gonna make it, I promise. Next time we meet, I'll only be an unlucky person instead of a goddess. Y yeah that's the spirit. Well, Mr. Wright, Maya, I should get going. Okay, good luck to you. Thanks, you take care of yourselves, too. 
what a horrible day. I've gotten my memory back, but things are still a little fuzzy. But you're okay, and that's what counts. You really have me worried. Come on, let's get back to the office. Hmm, I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So, this might sound bad, but, uh, who are you? What? I thought you said you got your memory back. At that moment, everything really did come back to me. Detective Gumshoe. He's someone I've had clashes with in the past during certain cases. But he's also been a good ally during others. The judge. He's a lovable, kind old man who's easily swayed by other people's opinions. But in the end, he always comes up with the right verdict. This person... I haven't got a clue. He seems to know me, but maybe he's mistaking me for someone else? And this girl... M Maya? You... you finally remembered. This is Maya Faye, my assistant. That's right, I have so many unforgettable memories about her. For example... Earth to Nick, what's wrong? You keep staring at me, don't tell me you've missed me. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose I have. I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. Huh? Well, I'm back now, so it's time for us to create new memories together. Alright, sounds good. All the phone numbers on my phone were erased by Mr. Wellington. I guess I have to start over from the very beginning. Come on, Nick, let's go to our usual burger joint. Okay, okay. Actually, it hasn't even been that long since she came back into my life. And that story... That story began on one rainy afternoon two months ago. And that's the next episode that's about to come up. <laughs> A brand new episode has been added. Reunion and Turnabout. Okay, so that's the end of uh, The Lost Turnabout. Next time we start Reunion and Turnabout. Uh, that case is very focused on spirit channeling. Uh, just, a, just a heads up, so... I, I know some people aren't super comfortable with that part of the series, so you might want to skip the case if, if that's a problem for you. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's a deal. Um, but yeah, that's the next case, Reunion and Turnabout. Um, that's it for this case. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed.